Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. Get ready. Hi everyone and welcome to a different kind of video that I'm, I'm trialling and that's a review video of really cheap knockoff games consoles and as you can see we've got the first one here that I'm doing and it's the handheld console with LCD screen now as you probably guess from the sticker this was uh, in the in the Christmas gift section of Debenhams it's a little handheld, um, obviously console in the, I suppose in the in the form of an old Nintendo LCD, you know, kind of Game and Watch series. At least um, it's it's reminiscent of that. At the, I'll get it out in a second. I'll just show you the box. Um, what we've got here is it says includes over 108 bit games. Yeah, I mean it is. It's not lying, there is over 100. 8-bit games, yeah, pretty much. First um, impressions, you know, yeah, they're not trying to deceive us. So we go on to the back, um, as you can see. Uh, produced for Debenhams. And it's by Orb Gaming. Now Orb Gaming tend to do quite a few of these consoles, handheld consoles, gimmicky consoles if you like for Debenhams particularly yeah I mean this one it would have retailed at £15 over the Christmas period uh, or the run up to Christmas I got this in the sale uh, on Boxing Day and there were, there were loads on the shelves loads of different uh, retro gaming type consoles uh, at half price so I got this for £7.50. Conveniently play your favourite retro games wherever you go. Includes over 108 bit games to choose from. 1.8 inch LCD screen. Uh, batteries required 3 times AAA. Heavy duty batteries not included. So obviously I've had to put my own in. I've already had this out. I've already had a go. And just to show you, it's it's made in China, as you would expect. Each side is held on with a, a circular sticker. I've took this one off. Leaves a bit of residue. As you can see from the screenshots, that's what that's what to expect. And let's start by getting it out and showing you it in the flesh. So what do we get with it? Well, we get a little wrist strap and that does loop through the little little handheld console and, and fastens onto it. Um, I won't be using that. So I'll just put that to one side. Obviously we get the we get the usual very basic uh, and vague instructions. Retro pocket games as you can see it's by Orb instructions like I said they're very basic and then this is just it's just safety information probably a legality um, it comes in this plastic protection case put that to one side so let's have a look let's have a little bit of a close up as you can see it, it like I said it, it's reminiscent of the old Nintendo um, game and watch series nice colour um, like a deep red if you notice straight away we can see a, a, a fault really a bit of a hindrance and it's this d-pad the, the up down left right buttons are all separate and this is going to cause problems even though they're only tiny it is going to cause problems with uh, directional I really should say it should cause problems with directional. The games I've played, they haven't got directional control anyway. But yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they are small. I mean, it's, it's a little console and it's a little handheld console anyway. And the rubber, they're not ideal. I mean, really, that would have been better as a, as a full uh, all-in-one D-pad. So we've got, you know, we've got a rocker movement. 
Um, the games I've played, you tend to hit them one by one. Sometimes it, it is easy to hit two at once. Up here, that is, although it's showing like a, a recycle, um, that's just the, the main menu screen, the, um, the menu screen I should say. And then we've got volume, control, then we've got play. Let's get this to focus, it doesn't seem to be focusing too well at the moment. And then we've got two buttons. Which, yeah, I mean, some games, there's, there's, like one particular shooting game, the one's for bullets, one's for a laser. I imagine your laser is your special weapon. Now, I may come to that one anyway. So, that's your on-off switch. And that's it. That's where your, your little wrist strap goes. That's your battery compartment. Pretty self-explanatory. So let's turn it on and let's uh, let's show you what you're going to be buying if you buy this. At the top it says Retro Arcade, Orb Gaming. So as you can see we've got the menu screen and we've got a little bit of sound. So that's not actually doing anything on the main menu. No, it is. That is for it. Well, it's volume control. Now that's full. That's full volume. <laughs> it's not. It's not great. It's not going to blow your eardrums out. That is for certain. How many games have we got? Well, if we just press up, we've got 153. And they are all different. It doesn't repeat itself. Now, these games are not emulated. We're not talking Nintendo uh, emulation or anything like that. We are talking games that have been um, made up for little systems like this. And you know, that, that's fair enough. There's obviously going to be no copyright issues or anything with this one. So anyway, let, let's let's have a, a little more look into it. Now, weirdly enough, this first one, Matched It Man, is really quite a good game. It's a one-on-one -on -one fighter, and the animation is it's really smooth, it's slick. So let's let's go on. Give you a little demonstration of Matched It Man. So start. And we have to press this a couple of times. And there we go. As you can see. Pretty smooth animation. That's one there. Uh, the top button, that is the kick. Bottom button is the punch. So, up is jump. And we can do uh, flying kicks and also look at the animation. I, I'm really quite impressed with this one. I'm not very good at it, as I'm not with any fighting game, no matter what system it is. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's great fun. Nice little sounds. Nice little sound effects. Round two. I mean, I'm not really uh, concentrating on this. I'm trying to keep it in the in the view in the LCD viewfinder. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you get the gist of that. Now, tank war. Some of these games are going to be quite alright. Um, some of these games are going to be pretty poor. I'll show you Tank War. Yeah. So, we've got nice little music. And the graphics on, on all the games are quite colourful. Let's start. We usually do get this kind of um, start screen for, for most of the games. So, we've got Fire. And both buttons is doing exactly the same. We've got up, left, right, down. Uh, like I said, don't believe this. These direct, I've, well, I never. These directional. But like I said, you're having to press them both at once. 
and it's quite fiddly you're not always guaranteed to get the direction you want so mainly it's just uh, up down left right fire and there I'm dead like I said, I'm not really concentrating on this See, it's hitting it, but it's not killing it. I have to get really close, and then I'm getting hit by them, them bullets because there's really no, there's no way of getting away from it. Like this, you, you know, it's really quite, it's quite clumsy, and that is the same for a lot of these games. Uh, football, quite a decent game. Uh, it's basically just penalty shootout, and. As you can see we've got, this is the power meter, he, the goalkeeper just moves left to right, you can move that way, one, two, three, so th there's only three <laughs> directions you can kick, uh, to the left of the goal, in the middle or to the right, so you choose, I'm going to go for right, I'm going to wait for him to get out of the way on that side, oh, you see I didn't put much power on it. Um, let's try and go for that side again this time and he saved it it's quite tricky this game it's just a matter of timing that bar yes so again pretty basic uh, Gang Tai 3 is a side scrolling shooter big chunky graphics uh, again, look at that. We've got the same intro screen. Uh, that's the laser. These are the bullets. Everything is just so big though on the screen. So it is kind of tricky to uh, to manoeuvre and, you know, escape the bullets. Uh, like I said, we've got a choice of two really and, and it's not like you're limited on how, how many times you can use this laser as if you know if it were a special weapon uh, you can use it all the time same with the bullets so you know it, it's it's a very basic shooter but the graphics you know to be fair they're nice and colourful and they're almost like in between 8 bit and 16 bit you know more like uh, 11 and a half bit uh, <laughs> You know, they do seem to have more more of a colour palette than 8 bits. But yeah, I mean, the games, like I said, tend to be a little bit unforgiving. Is it racing car? Let me try this one. Yeah, I mean, just look at the size of the car compared to the road. Um, it's It's massive. And <laughs> there's, there's just no no room for error here. Look at that! I can't I can't even get past. And now we're in the opposite lane. Um, oh, three lanes. And that one's in the middle. I've got past it. Got past it this time. Yeah, that that's. Oh, that's break. Uh, I've got another gear and I've crashed two gears we're zooming now we're zooming yeah I mean as you can imagine how limited play is really playability and uh, uh, Dinosaur, well, I mean most of the games are really, even if they're um, different graphics, different theme, they're pretty, um, they're pretty much similar, Raiden, oops, that's it wrong one. Stage one, oh it's a, it's a it's a shooter. A 
game, the, the, the graphics are really big. The uh, sprites are a big, chunky, clunky, clumsy. I mean, the graphics, like I said, they're really not bad. They're, uh, they're not really justified on this tiny little screen. Ah, you see, I've got a special move there, special, special weapon. This is uh, the bottom one is just the firing. So yeah, I'll show you one more. Uh, let's just, I mean, I haven't gone through every single one of these games. Uh, but some of the tiles are quite funny as well. Give me water. Disappear boxes. Catch chicken. <laughs> uh, my my favourite one. And Retro Bear will, uh, will appreciate this. Bear versus Bald. Um, so. <laughs> Bear versus Bald. Let's, let's try this one. Uh, yeah, this is this is like a little plot. I, I have actually played this, but there's just no, there's no um, sense of what what to do with it. So I can move left and right. I can can't jump. I can jump that button, and if I can kick that away, I can hit them. And when the the little car lands on them, there we go. I can knock it down and I can knock it out but it's like oh, I've got killed and for some reason you start at the top but it's like where where do you go there's nowhere to go um, other than this one screen and the best thing is level 2 is just exactly the same so it's that same layout so <laughs> I mean, maybe you have to kill a certain amount of enemies. Um, yeah. Sorry, Retro Bear. This this ain't doing uh, this ain't doing your name any justice. Um, I'm afraid this bear is a bit. Uh, how 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 polite can we be? Um, unsatisfying. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, duck thief mushroom ball let's have a look at mushroom ball and then and then we'll we'll call it a day I, I'm sure you you've seen enough of these I've no idea what to do with this so we're a bouncing ball so we've obviously to collect the, the mushrooms nice and easy stage two there eh, we've got a it's a little bit harder. Go. Oh. Ah, you see, that's how you do it. And we go down. Back across. Tell you what, this isn't a bad little game. We're going to get harder. Stage three. Now we've got a moving platform down there, I've just seen. Ooh. <laughs> That's quite a good game actually. I'm quite impressed with that. Yeah, this is this is the Orb Gaming. Uh, well, it's got all kinds of names. Retro Arcade, um, Retro Game, um, Handheld Console. Uh, like I said, it should have been... Originally it would have been £15, I got it in the sale, £7.50. Cracking little uh, console. Yeah, I mean, it's limited, but I, I would say it's a nice collector's item. There's really nothing wrong with, with this being part of your collection. And if you want to if you wanna do a collection, do, do these cheap little knockoff um, arcade, you know, consoles. Um, I have got more to show you, and there's a few more handhelds, there's a few full-size systems, um, which mainly have Nintendo uh, emulation software on them, uh, Nintendo games, NES games. But yeah, this is a quick little, uh, quick little handheld. It's it's not going to pique your interest 
uh, for a great amount of time. But just for an odd five or ten minutes that you you know you've got spare, it's handy to keep in your pocket. Are you really going to do that though? Are you really going to uh, walk around with this in your pocket and just get it out on the bus or um, you know if you if you're waiting in a queue? Uh, very much doubt it. But you know. It's, I mean, let's let's face it. We're looking at a kids' toy here, aren't we? It's it's ideal for kids, and I would imagine that's what they've primarily designed this little system for. Keep kids uh, uh, occupied uh, while parents are busy doing whatever. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for the this review. And let me know in the comments what you think of it. Do you think it's an absolute pile of rubbish? Do you think it's uh, a quirky little item? I certainly think so. And I'm pretty sure Pete Fighter 2 will as well. He, he's like me. He, he loves these quirky little things. And as we've, we've spoke about it before, the charm of the this one in particular is the, the really crappy 8-bit uh, style games that, you know, they're, they're just made up purely for these little systems. You know, it, it's not. It, it's fun to see. It's fun to see the games and how how badly some of them play. But yeah, I mean that 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 mushroom ball was, was pretty all right actually. It was quite a good game. So it's not all bad. Anyway, uh, like I said, hope you like the video and tune in soon for the for the next cheap clone console. Uh, until then, see you later.